Okay, um, Michael, nice to meet you. Let me just unmute you. Okay, you're unmuted. Nice to meet you, Michael. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Uh, and Dr. Bredesen, thank you so much for coming back again to speak with us. We are very grateful for someone who does the amount of research you do to share with us so freely. So thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. Um, let me start by asking <clears throat> Dr. Bredesen, how unique is your information? Are you a specialist who is one of a few, very few people that is aware of this information, or is this now standard information that lots of people in your field are aware of? Yeah, that's a great point. So we were the first, you know, after 30 years in the lab and publishing 230 papers from my laboratory group, we were the first to publish the reversal of cognitive decline in patients with Alzheimer's. That was published in 2014. We published additional cases in 2016. We published 100 cases in 2018, and then we published the first trial uh, in 2022 in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. Uh, so the there has been, as you can imagine, there's there's still ongoing controversy because people are trying different things. So there are, uh, for example, uh, drug trials being published, but it's important to point out that the drug trials uh, have shown not an improvement in people's cognition, not a stabilization in cognition, but rather when they go downhill, they go downhill a little more slowly. In one case, it was 22%. In one case, it was 27%. In one case, it was 36%. So all we're talking about with the trials is just a slight slowing. In our case, we actually made people better, and we have people that have sustained their improvement now for over a decade. So quite different. But you're right, this is not accepted by everyone yet. And uh, although we've trained over 2000 physicians in 10 different countries and all over the US, uh, we are now starting a larger trial, which is a randomized controlled trial at six different sites. This is Hollywood, Florida, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, Sacramento, California, Oakland, California, and uh, Marin uh, County, California, just north of San Francisco. So we'll have a lot more data uh, in the upcoming year and a half or so. Uh, but there is, as you know, there is uh, a, an ongoing controversy about uh, drugs versus precision medicine protocols. Uh, just quickly, be before I go into other things, an article came out a week or two or three ago about a new drug for Alzheimer's that got approved. You want to just quickly comment on that? So the new ones haven't been approved yet. They they have been uh, acceler. They have gotten ex what's called accelerated approval. So it's essentially partial approval while they're looking for complete approval. And I'm assuming you're referring to Danenamab that came out from Lilly. Uh, so the two most recent are Lacanamab, also called Lakembi, and that's from Biogen, and then Danenamab, which is uh, coming out from Lilly, and that's the one that showed about a 36 percent slowing. So my argument is that look if Although they've called this a breakthrough, uh, if Elon Musk told you that SpaceX, uh, everybody uh, dies, they, the, the rockets explode every time, but in a big breakthrough, the rockets explode 36% later, uh, that really wouldn't, you wouldn't consider that to be a huge breakthrough. We want to see people actually get better and stay better. Uh, Michael, you wrote a book, and it's a fantastic title. You guys are geniuses for using this title prevent Alzheimer's in just 10 minutes a day. But aside from it being a catchy title, um, how much is that realistic? Because I'm very interested in preventing Alzheimer's in just 10 minutes a day. How do you prevent Alzheimer's in just 10 minutes a day? Um, well, thanks for the question. Yeah, you can thank Jack, uh, Jack Canfield for that title as kind of a retitle of the book. But um, basically, the idea is that when we're looking at something like man, uh, manual medicine, which is very complementary to other approaches, what we're looking at is a way that we can take the system and increase the fluid flow of cerebral spinal fluid, which is kind of the basis of cranial sacral therapy. And the idea when we say prevent Alzheimer's in just 10 minutes a day is that if somebody is not afflicted uh, with that diagnosis right at the moment, if we can actually apply something like a very simple technique, which I can go into more detail about if you like, called the still point, which only takes about five to 10 minutes a day to do. And then there's a complementary technique called cranial pumping, 
that can actually pe put people in a situation where they have more enhanced fluid flow and they're less likely to encounter the effects of the disease, which over time, over decades, can be cumulative. So that's why we kind of use that title to kind of catch people's imagination to say, hey, there's something we can do to change the trajectory of Alzheimer's disease initially and keep people in a point where they don't develop more aggravated symptoms as they go along. And the still point and the cranial pumping, could we do at home by ourselves? Uh, yeah, once somebody listens, I even have a virtual class to teach this. So it takes uh, a day or two for someone to kind of palpate what's called the cranial sacral rhythm. There's oscillations in the body uh, all the time. You know, there's cardiac rhythm, there's respiratory rhythm, there's other oscillations in the body. And my mentor, Dr. John Upledger, years ago at Michigan State University, um, developed a protocol for saying, yeah, there, there's something that we can do to actually listen to this fundamental uh, rhythm in the body. And this rhythm that actually is developed on osteopathy from AT still uh, in the 1860s, 1870s, 1880s, uh, and then some of his mentors like Sutherland, basically the idea is that when people palpate this rhythm, it's underlying the neuroskeletal muscular system. And when people start to palpate that and start to release, then they actually shift the whole structure of the body. And the whole uh, kind of thesis of osteopathy is structure and function. That even if you can change something on a structural level, even very minutely, on a very fine level, it can actually cause a change. So it's very natural medicine. And even back in um, 1885, when the first school of osteopathic medicine was uh, founded in Kirksville, Missouri, they had the theory, uh, the old time osteopaths, that the, the body had its own natural pharmacy. And if you could recruit that inner wisdom of the body and, and as if wake it up, the body could find a way to heal itself. So that's kind of the, the foundation that Dr. L. Pleasure uh, built on, and he's trained, you know, uh, tens of thousands of therapists in the last 30 years on that basis. So is there, how exactly do we learn still point and cranial pumping? Is there a video on YouTube? Like, where do we learn how to do this? It's a two-day training that I have for people. We have been teaching in person for the longest time. You know, we've, we've uh, trained tens of thousands of people. But since the pandemic, as many people did, we've adopted a video where people can learn at home, work on themselves, and then work on their loved ones as well. So it's a procedure where you learn the palpation, takes time. It's like what I'm teaching this weekend. It's a two-day class. And when people have enough repetition and they get silent enough to listen, then they can hear it. Just like a doctor can be trained to palpate and listen to the cardiac rhythm and the respiratory. This is a little more subtle. It's a little quieter, but anyone can do it. They just can maintain a bit of stillness, if you will, and trust their brain, their right brain. And then they can begin to listen to that and, and see it, even if they haven't had any advanced uh, medical training. So you feel confident that if we took your two-day training, even if we have no special skills, that we'll be able to learn this and then do it every day? Yeah. And we have a support system where if somebody's struggling a little bit, we can come back and support you as well. That's key. Okay. Great. Okay. Dr. Bredesen, every single person right now has got a pen in their hand. They've got a piece of paper. They've listed one through 10 on their paper, and they are waiting to hear you say exactly step-by-step. -step, what do we do to prevent getting Alzheimer's? Assume we're going to listen to you. We're motivated. We, we're ready. What are the, you know, step-by-step, -step, the most powerful possible things that we could do from all your research if we are very committed to preventing getting dementia or Alzheimer's? Yeah, great point. So, so let me start by saying, with everything that we now know and have published over the last 10 years, Alzheimer's is now optional. And I know that sounds crazy, but we've published it. We've seen it again and again. So here's the thing. The critical piece is do not wait. Just as we all know, we don't wait to get advanced cancer. If we turn 50, we get a colonoscopy. Very no. similarly, anyone over 40 should get a cognoscopy. It's easy to do. It's some blood tests that are looking at what actually drives cognitive decline. Second thing, it's a simple online screening. 
So it's just looking at your cognition. It takes about 20 or 30 minutes. And then thirdly, and only if you're having symptoms already or if you're doing poorly on the tests, you should also have an MRI with volumetrics. So in other words, looking at the regions of your brain and if there's any atrophy in any of those. Then what you're going to do to prevent it, it depends on what you find in those studies. And so think about it this way. Two, two major points here. Number one, what drives Alzheimer's? Two major things, inflammation and reduction in energetics. So we say Alzheimer's equals IA over E. That is to say immune activation divided by energetics. So anything that's increasing your immune activation, and that can be poor dentition, it can be herpes simplex, it can be leaky gut, it can be an unknown infection like Lyme disease. It can be exposure to mold and mycotoxins, any of those things. And then anything that reduces the energy support for your brain. And this is why I think the idea of you know, craniosacral, yes, this is part of keeping your brain supported. Fantastic. Anything that helps with better outcomes. So when it comes to energetics, we're talking about four things. Blood flow to your brain. We're talking about uh, we're talking about oxygenation. So people who have sleep apnea, they have increased risk. We're talking about mitochondrial function and we're talking about ketone level. The ketones actually provide just as you should be able to go back and forth between glucose and ketones. So when you say the 10 things, the main thing you wanna do is get a cognoscopy and find out where you stand because for some people, it will mean healing a leaky gut. For some people, it will mean improving your oral microbiome. For some people, it will mean removing the source of inflammation, such as exposure to mycotoxins. For many people, it will actually mean to get better oxygenation while you're sleeping. So let me point out that there are four stages you go through. And right now, virtually all medicine is focused on the last two when everybody should be focused on the first two. So the first stage, when, when you're developing Alzheimer's, the first stage, you're asymptomatic. You don't know you have it. You can already, this happens to people often in their 30s and early 40s. You can see it on a PET scan. There are new blood tests now. So that's a fantastic advance. You'll be able to see, am I headed for this problem, which gives you even a leg up to start even earlier. Second phase is called, it's called SCI, subjective cognitive impairment. The good news is that lasts about 10 years. During that time, you can still score normally on cognitive testing, but you already know that things aren't what they were. You may have trouble remembering phone numbers. You may have trouble remembering faces, names, things like that. Don't wait. We've always been told there's nothing you can do about it, so don't come in. Nothing could be further from the truth. There's a lot we can do about it. And we see virtually everybody with SCI we can reverse 100%, they do great. The third phase now, so this is a relatively late stage, is called mild cognitive impairment. And that's an unfortunate term, mild cognitive impairment. What, what it should be called is relatively late stage Alzheimer's disease, because it's like telling someone, don't worry, you only have mildly metastatic cancer. It's a relatively late stage. But even in there, in our trial, 84% of those people actually improved. And then the fourth and final stage is the dementia stage. And by definition, that means that you're now having troubles with the activities of daily living, paying your bills, driving yourself around, toileting, showering, grooming, all that sort of basic stuff. So please don't wait until that time. Please come in the beginning here, either get on active prevention when you turn 40 to 45, or if you start having just the beginnings, subjective cognitive impairment, please get evaluated, please get on active treatment. And that'll be a little bit different for each person, but it will involve those two major things. It'll involve inflammation and what's actually causing the inflammation, getting rid of that. And it'll involve improving your energetics, making sure you don't have sleep apnea, making sure your mitochondria are functioning well, making sure that you've got enough blood flow and oxygenation. For many people, it'll be doing things like EWOT, exercise with oxygen therapy, where you're actually getting improved blood flow and improved oxygenation. So again, the, the take-home lesson here is virtually nobody should get this disease if you simply don't wait.
Okay, so <clears throat> let's assume that someone goes to the doc, goes, gets these tests, and you say, not so great. It looks like you got all kinds of problems. Yeah. You got lots of inflammation. You got lots of oxygenation issues. Yeah. And now, you know, and they're to say there's a lot of things wrong. Yeah. Um, totally fixable. Right. So then the question is even a level beyond what you both just said, what is the actual specific thing are you saying to do? You know, assuming I understand it, you know, you'd, you'd rather test me and know exactly where the issue is. But the general advice that you give to, you know, most people, this this basic things you're saying, can we try to name the very most specific thing that I should do? Should I wake up at 6 a.m.? Should I fast? Should I exercise? What is, you know, the most specific thing that applies to almost everyone? Even if we don't have it, we want to take the most, if we want to take the most preventative action we can, whether or not we are what's whatever stage we're at. So let me tell you two things then. Okay. Yeah. Number one, go on your computer and type in my cognoscopy and get a cognoscopy. That's the number one. And then the second, and that, that will, you know, that will basically give you all the results you need. And you don't even need a doctor to do that. You can get the test. It's very easy to do. Now, the second thing is there are seven basics nutrition, exercise, sleep, stress, brain training, detox, and some targeted supplements. Say that slower again, nutrition. Okay. Seven things. So nutrition, let's, we'll talk, we'll go through each one quickly. Nutrition, what it's called KetoFlex 12-3. It is a plant rich, mildly ketogenic diet, high in fiber, high in phytonutrients. And by the way, you can now get it uh, you can literally get it from Nutrition for Longevity. They've just actually produced this. Uh, so you can actually have them send some to your home. It's easy, it's inexpensive, and you can see what they've actually put in it. It is a you know plant-rich, mildly ketogenic diet. So that's diet. Exercise, you want both aerobic and strength training. It improves everything from blood flow to improving your insulin sensitivity, et cetera. Um, sleep, and we heard, you know, we we're hearing about sleep before. Okay, sleep's huge. Uh, and you want to get, you know, seven to eight hours of restorative sleep with check your uh, oxygenation during the sleep. You can do it with an aura ring or an Apple watch, or you can do it by getting an oximeter or borrowing one from your physician. It's very easy or do a sleep study. Any of those, make sure your oxygen is sitting up where it should be, which is in the mid to high nineties. Uh, and then uh, stress uh, have, as long as you've got a lot of stress going on, you know, your amygdala is firing you. You're recognizing that stress. And part of what Alzheimer's is all about is a protective downsizing mode of your brain. It's very much like what happened to our country when we had COVID-19, everyone's pulling back. That's what your brain is doing when it has these insults. And that's what Alzheimer's is the result of. And then brain training, I mentioned Brain HQ is an excellent one. Uh, they've, they've published the most on what actually helps. Uh, and then detox, and there's some basic detox that everyone can do from you know, filtered water to sweating, to making sure your glutathione level is normal, things like that. Uh, and then the final thing is some targeted supplements. Uh, and that depends a little bit on where you stand, but uh, excellent ones are things like omega-3s, uh, resolvins, uh, whole coffee fruit extract. Uh, those are some of my favorites. The bottom line here is that the armamentarium is huge for cognitive decline. We should not be getting cognitive decline. People wait too long and do too little, and that's why we have the problem. Alzheimer's right now is set to, uh, to, to absolutely dwarf the pandemic. We had 1 million people die, just over a million people die in the United States from the pandemic. Of the currently living Americans, the statistics say that about 45 million of us will die of Alzheimer's unless we do something about it. Well, there's a tremendous amount you can do about it today.